Hello and welcome to this LifeLux tutorial. This video will show generic functions inside the player, which is the main working space in a Simulate LifeLux. Let's start from the top. In the top menu bar, you have access to little helpers like the scopes, for instance, or our pan zoom tool, the annotate tool, which lets you draw on the image, the memories, which can hold up to eight grades, which you can store by shift clicking any of the slots and recall by just clicking the slots. Next, we have a magnifying glass, which allows you to inspect pixel values on the image and also the ability to pull snapshots. To the left, you will have the grade controller, which you can also enable with hotkey Q. Inside the grade controller, you can dial in the current date, shooting day, scene, shot, take for the current grade, and also save the grade for all cameras. Down here, you can switch through the individual cameras, which you can also do using the F keys on your keyboard. Further down, you have the ability to record any given channel and also generate reports or go through your look history in order to apply an older grade that has been stored to the current set of cameras. To the right, we have the metadata stack. The metadata stack shows all the metadata LiveFlux is currently capturing through the SDI channel from the Panasonic camera that is attached to our video I.O. Hence, you can see the capture gamma, the capture gamut, but also ISO sensitivity or the iris F number. As you can see, the 3.1 corresponds perfectly with what we're capturing here in the viewport. If I change the exposure on the camera to make the image brighter and quickly refresh our metadata stack, you can see that the number changes with it. Now before we get to the color tools, let's take a quick look at the main toolbar in the player. Here we are provided with buttons to zoom in and out. However, this can be achieved much more conveniently by just holding down Alt and drag up and down. If I hold down space and drag, I can reposition the image in the viewport. Next, we can also view the image one-on-one, -on -one, toggle full screen, inspect different color channels and also disable the grade on this channel. Note that this will also disable the grade on any LUT box that is connected to this channel. The button next to the grade button disables color management for the interface monitor. In this case, the incoming signal is in V-Log. But our interface monitor is set to Rec. 709 and LiveLux will apply an output transform for it. If we disable the button here, we are looking at the V-Log signal without the transform to Rec. 709. Over here on the left side, we can enable dual or split view, or use hotkeys D and S. We can then for instance disable the grade on the right side and wipe it against the graded image on the left. Alternatively, we can select a different camera from the drop-down for comparison or show the video wall with all cameras. This obviously makes more sense in dual view. Now for the grading tools. Depending on whether we are working LUT based or CDL based, we will have more or less tools available here to work with. Right now we are working LUT based, hence the label here reads LUT grade. Any look we create using the tools in this section can be transported with a 3D LUT. Down here we have the FX section. Here we can dial in texture effects like grain, highlight bloom, diffusion or vignette. Also, we have a Kia for green screen replacements. Note that none of the tools in the FX section can travel with a LUT or CDL. However, if you are using Scratch to create your dailies, you can reapply these effects in there and have them applied to your dailies this way. More on the color tools and grading modes in a dedicated video. Lastly, let's check out the gallery. The gallery features two tabs, references and looks. 
as opposed to the look history from the Great Controller, which stores all the looks created for every camera, the looks tab only stores a user selection of grades and lets us apply them to the currently active channel. Like such. The References tab holds actual reference clips. These can really be of any kind. Still images, QuickTime clips, references recorded in live looks, or even raw files like this red raw file here. If I want to view it, I just need to switch into split or dual view and drag and drop the clip into the right side. Alternatively, I can set the drop down to reference and now switch through the clips in the reference tab. Last but not least, let's take a look at the lower right corner of the screen. From here we can call up the help menu, hotkey H by the way, to display all available shortcuts in the software. This was the tour through the player in Lifelooks. I hope you enjoyed it. Next up, the grading tools and color modes. See you soon.